tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape. Escape. Transcribed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are lost in the trackless wild of the Irish moors. Your only companion, a beautiful gypsy woman. And you know that somewhere in the dark behind you, searching every foot of ground for you, is the giant of a man called Charon, who plans to take your girl, and at the same time, take your life. Listen now as Escape brings you John Daner's story, Ben Chalina and the Fisherman. It was a cold and gusty night that found me sitting over a whiskey in a pub in Ballymoran, a lonely village situated on the bleak uplands of County Mayo in the west of Ireland. I had come over from London for a fortnight of trout fishing, which I'd been told was excellent in these parts. As it was late and the pub deserted, I was questioning the proprietor, one Hackett J. O'Cool, about the lakes and streams nearby. He was a little man, all moustache and eyebrows, and a bowler hat pulled down over his ears, industriously polishing the glasses behind the counter. And through life unblessed we hear of. So, you're here for the fishing now? Yes, I've been told it's excellent here. Oh, that it is, that it is. Losing all that me life, dear. Well, where would you suggest I make a start? It's well, no. That's hard to say, hard to say. You, you might try the reels of Kildenny. The reels of... No, 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 no. Think it over twice. You'd be better off in the lock. Well, where's that? Yes, yes, yes. That'll be the best time, sure, for a stranger. The lock. Where is the lock? The lock, the now, is only a mile to the east. Uh, but that's by going straight up. To get there, you have to walk around the mountain five miles and... Oh, there's no road and the... No, 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 no. That, that, that's too far. You better try something closer in. <laughs> So far, I have the rills of Kildenny and Loch Donal. They're both good, you say. Oh, good trout that long. That long? Well, that long. Even that's respectable. Respectable? I'll tell you whether trout are more respectable than that. I'd better have another whiskey. Aye. And you'll need it when I tell you about the place I'm dreaming. Won't you join me, Mr. Oko? Oh, jo- <laughs> Mr. I will. <laughs> oh, I should not even be telling you this, but... Uh, uh, but I feel it my duty since you've come all the way from London with your fish pole. Yes, I'd hate to be disappointed. The Drino. The Drino? Where's that? The waters of the Drino up on Dark Mayo. And the fishing's good? Yeah, that big. Truly? Strike me, a firm line, or strike me dead. But why did you hesitate a moment ago? It's because... Well, Dark Mayo... What is dark mail? Oh, the loneliest moor in all of Ireland, north or south, stretches from the mountains to the sea and cursed with a loneliness that keeps all living things away. Where do I find this place? The all except for the gypsy folk. Last year, before he went mad, Pothery Slogan told of seeing the black Romany dancing among the spirits. People in the vapors with a wild fandango they were. Mr. O'Cool, how far is it? With burning and flames. How far, Mr. O'Cool? Not far. Not far, but you'd be lost forever. <laughs> oh, come now. I'm sure the wee folk won't make off with a harmless fisherman like me. How do I find this, uh, this dark mayo and the drino? When through life unblessed we rove... I'll tell you. <laughs> The following day, I gave myself an early start and arrived after an hour's walk at the place described by Mr. O'Cool, 
dark mayo, and the waters of the Drino. It was a cheerless expanse of ancient rock and wild gorse shrouded over with lifeless tatters of mist or, or vapors. I could readily understand the natives' reluctance to set foot on this bleak ground. But the deep flowing waters of the Drino excited me in this barren land, and soon I had my line in the water. Mr. O'Cool was right. The trout were magnificent, and my luck was with me. It was almost noon when something really big struck at my fly. Blast! Missed you. Well, I'll get you yet. (laughs) (laughs) Who's there? Be careful you do not fall off the rock. I can't see you. Here? Here I am. Oh, oh, I see you now. Oh. What is the matter? What? Nothing. It's... So lonely here, so desolate, I didn't expect to see anyone, let alone a beautiful young woman. Oh, no, no. It is you who is beautiful. I watch you all morning. You've been here all morning? By the rocks up there. And I say, oh, what a beautiful man. I wonder what he's like to love him. Oh? uh, Well, is that so? I see you lose that fish. You're very funny. The look on your face when you say, blast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I enjoy that word. Uh, seems to help me carry the burden of my misfortune. Blast! Blast! <laughs> <laughs> well, I say, you'll frighten off all the fish. They can hear you, know. Oh, that is lies. But I tell you, I am magic. All morning I make you catch fish. All the fish, all morning. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. Now, again you go fish, and I say, you catch the same one you just lose. I hope you're right. Well, here goes. Cross your fingers or whatever it is you've been doing. Now, into that pool over there. Perfect. Now we'll see. Yes, you will catch him very soon. Working your magic? Yes, magic, 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 magic. Good. You know, you worry me. Why? Aren't you uh, cold, dressed like that? I am not cold. Hardly fitting for the rigors of dark mail. Don't you like? Fascinating. Inadequate, but... There he is again. Got him. You see, the magic word. He's a fighter. I'll have to work closer to him. Oh, be careful that rock you step on. Now, boy, I've got you now. I've got you. He's sleeping. The rock. Oh, I help. I help. I'm all right. I can just. Ooh. Oh, what is the matter? Oh, nothing. I'll be all. Oh. oh, let me help you. I must have twisted my ankle. I can't put any weight on it. Here, take my hand. Oh, you'll get all wet. No, hold now. So, up, slowly. (laughs) There now. Thank you. Poor, beautiful man. Let me look at your leg. Can't see nothing. It hurt. Can't put my weight on it. You come with me to my caravan. I fix you. Uh, Why not back to Ballymoran? It is too far. My caravan is closer. Come, I show you. The camp of the gypsies lay in a sheltered pocket of ground surrounded by great boulders and the never ending scrub of dark mail. There was none of the color which I associated with a gypsy camp and the people of Romany. Instead, here were a grim folk, animating a dismal landscape, who fell silent at my approach and who looked at me with suspicion. There was a cook fire burning in the center of the clearing, an old crone stirring a black kettle. The beautiful gypsy girl helped me into her caravan, a rather disorderly house on wheels, and made me comfortable on a pile of blankets. <sighs> Now, I will make you well. First time I've been in one of these. 
It is my home. It's rather clever at that. Like the tortoise, you carry your house with you. Yes, like a tortoise. Everything on my back, heavy. Uh. I noticed the others, too. So grim. No smiles. It is Choron, the head of my tribe. A hard man? Hard. Cruel. But he is gone away now to trade horses in the south countries. He will not be back for a long time. Oh, but let us not talk about him. Here. You lie back. And I will fix you. What is that? Magic. <laughs> Hold on there. The last time you tried your magic, it broke my leg. Oh, no, no. My magic only cuts you fish. Anyway, your leg not broken. Oh, I see. This? Is blood of my brother. Blood of you? In that bag? Oh, not real blood. Little stone, little glass, and many flowers. I put it on your leg. So? And it will take away the pain. Very magic. An amulet, eh? Look, don't you think I should get to a duck? <sighs> Why did you do that? You are beautiful. I like to kiss you. Yes. It does seem to help. You like to? I think we should try it again. Just to be sure. <laughs> what is your name? Benchilina is her name. <gasps> Benchelina Petulengro, her name. So stood the carrying a kite, Jugal. The woman who is to marry Choron. You spy for Choron? Yes, for Choron. What the devil is this all about? Ah, he's Vino, the shadow of Choron. He's the coward who whispers the ugly stories to his master. Now look here. Oh, God, you. You rest. This is not you fight. You rest. You, Carlo. What are you doing here tonight? Joron is coming, Benchilina, you know. I will not be here. He will find you. Then I will be dead. I will not marry him. So, I shall sit here and wait until he comes. Do your waiting outside, Carlo. No. Joron says I watch. I watch. It will be a long watch. Not long. Choron comes in the morning. He, in the morning? He, he is coming to take his bride, the beautiful Benchilina. You lie. He is in the south. But what will Choron say in the morning when I tell him the beautiful Benchilina was kiss the gorgeous here? You will not tell Choron anything. He will cut you in the face in the morning. If I tell him, is not so. You will not tell Joron anything. Benchilina. In the morning, Benchilina. Not anything! Hey, oh. Rhino? Rhino? Wait. <clears throat> Let me look at him. Huh? What? Gave him a good one, all right. Is he dead? No. No, but what happens now? We must go. You and me. Why? Because of this Choron? If he find us here, he kill you and he kill me. Now is the time to run, to hide. Come. <laughs> You are listening to Ben Chilina and the Fisherman. Tonight's presentation of Escape. In the world of narcotics, a pusher is someone who sells the illegal drugs. Tomorrow evening, CBS Radio's Night Watch Police tape record an actual attempt to make a sale. An attempt intercepted by alert night watchers. Every Friday evening, CBS Radio spotlights true dramatic police proceedings on Night Watch. And now, Escape and the second act. Of Benjelina and the Fisherman.
albino lay unconscious on the floor of the caravan. There was a sickly pallor to his face, and as I looked at his still form, a wild thought came to me. What if he's dead? Not unconscious, but dead. And the name Charon took shape in my mind as something to fear. That maybe the coming morning would bring me to disaster. Suddenly, I found myself drawn into the conflict as surely as though it were myself had struck Vino. From now on, I knew my fortunes were with the gypsy Benchalina. And so we fled the gypsy camp. All night, Benchalina drove the horse cart at high speed over the moor, over the endless miles of dark mayo, until at dawn the road dwindled to little more than a cow path, and we came to the sea. There was a stone cottage standing alone on a cliff, but something was wrong. No, no, not here, not here. What's the matter? I came all the way west, but I take the wrong road. I am lost. Ah, get up! Ah! What are you doing? I must find the road. But you're going back. I must find the road. It's suicide. We can't go back. Uh, Toron is following. Give me the reins. No, no. Give them to me. No, I give them. Who? Who? Now, be sensible. If we go back one step, we'll walk right into Choron. He can't be far behind. We'll find some other way. We'll go back to that cottage and ask. Yep! There is a town. Belclue. Where is Belclue? It is in a bay by the ocean. If we find Belclue, we are safe. Who? We'll ask here. Help me down. Yes. Now, give me your hand. <clears throat> your foot is better? Mm. Seems to be. Now, let's see if there's anyone about. Hello? Anyone here? Hello? Let's look inside. Deserted. Come, Don't let's... go in. Why not? There is death in the house. Death? Come now, it's just an ordinary cottage. It... Death has been here. Or death is waiting. I know. In my bones, I know. Yeah. If it will make you feel better, we don't have to go in. Don't go in. And let's look around. Come along. Let's see what we can from the point. Yes. There you are. The ocean. It makes me afraid. The waves, the water. We so high. You're afraid of many things. The Romani are afraid of the great oceans. Good. Maybe that will keep Choron away. Ah, uh, not Choron. He will follow anywhere we go except... Wait. Look. What? Over there. The bay. Where? No, no, no. Farther along the coast. See? The town. Oh, yes. Belclu. I know it is. The town you were looking for? Yes. I... Oh. But see, there is no road along the cliffs. No way to reach it from here without going back. We can't do that. Wait, wait a minute. I have an idea. I'll go down to the water. Maybe there's a boat that belongs to this cottage. If I find one, we can make our way around the point and cross the bay to Belclu. You stay here and keep watch. I'll be right back. By the water's edge, I found what I was looking for. A battered but serviceable dory in a sheltered cove. I was elated, and I hastened back up the path to tell Benchalina the good news. When I reached the top, I called to her. There was no answer. I looked out across the moor, but Benchalina was nowhere in sight. 
I became alarmed and increased my pace, calling to her again and again. Still, there was no answer. Then, rounding the cottage, I saw something that stopped me dead in my tracks. There in the sun, sitting on a stone wall, swinging his legs back and forth, was a man. A swarthy man with a handsome, pockmarked face. He was whistling a tune. When he saw me, he stopped and smiled. Sir, good day. Then he beckoned to me with the gun he held in his right hand. Please, come here. Oh, I am so sorry. Your leg, yes. They told me you injured it. What a shame. You must be... Joron. Joron de Cangalar. I believe you have heard of me. I've heard of you. Far enough. Stop there. Now let me look at you. I... I know it's right. You are handsome. Quite understandable that Benchelina should be carried away. Where is Benchalina? Out there, hiding behind that big rock. I don't see her. <laughs> no, we don't see her. But I know she is there. She saw me coming, ran to hide. Now she's watching to see what I will do. And what are you going to do? You will see. Benchalina, listen to me. It is time to go. I will count to ten. If you do not come before I finish, I will shoot your lover. Shoot? What kind of man are you? <laughs> One, two, three, four. This is insane. Five, six, seven. Seven, Benchelina, think! Your lover! Seven, eight. <laughs> ah, there she is. Good. Very good! Very wise, Benchelina. Hurry now, it's time to go back. Hello, Romani chief. Hey, you are still beautiful. Clandana Mingro. Too bad you are still beautiful. Look, I don't know what you're planning to do. Gorgio, but... don't say anything. It is all right. I will go back. Now, lover, we do not need you. Turn around. What do you do, Choron? We leave the Barasan here. Around, I say. Oh, no, Choron, no! No! It must have been a savage blow, for I lay unconscious most of the day. When I opened my eyes, the clouds had blanked out the sun, and the sky was threatening. I dragged myself into the cottage. It was empty. In one corner, there was a pile of dried seaweed, and I fell across it. For a long while, I lay unmoving. Then came the wind, then the rain. I managed to find fuel to light a fire in the hearth. At least I would be warm. Night came. It was sometime during the early hours when looking toward the door, I saw it swing slowly open. I rubbed my eyes and looked again. Framed in the doorway was a man. I looked closely, then I recognized that it was Charon. He was standing in the heavy downpour, his right hand behind his back. I bring you a bride. I... I don't understand you. I bring back your love. What have you done with Benchalina? She is with me. You want to see? Of course I want to see Benchalina. All right, then look! Benchalina, come. Benchalina! It was unbelievable. 
But only that morning had been a wild and beautiful creature. Stood before me now, a hag. With incredible brutality, Charon had carved a thousand deep wrinkles into her face and broken her teeth into ugly snags. Her hair hung lank over her face. Only the eyes showed it was Ben Selina. She stared at me, and a thousand raindrops, like a thousand tears, poured down her mutilated face. You like her? Your bride? What have you done to Benchelina? She is yours, Barasa. You foul, insane. What have you done? Do not come closer. I'll kill you, you evil coward, you rat. Are you? No. He will shoot you. I'll kill him. One more step and I shoot. No, Joron. No. Stop. Get out of the Give me that gun. Well, Take your was dead at my feet. Benchelina's body lay a little to the side, her black hair covering her tortured face. I looked at her for a long while, then I went outside. Dark Mayo was suffering under the heavy rain. I walked down the path to the road, and then down the road. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you transcribed Ben Chalina and the Fisherman by John Daner, starring Vic Perrin with Paula Winslow. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear, John Daner, and Lawrence Dobkin. Your announcer, Roy Rowan. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are drifting along the muddy reaches of a South American river. Your diving gear in readiness, the air pump going. Yet you know that in the murky depths below you... Waiting in the slime there for you is a mortal enemy from whom there may be no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you Anthony Barrett's story, Blood Waters. CBS Radio brings you the great news reporters of the CBS Radio Newsroom, Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas, Robert Trout, and a long list of familiar names for news. And remember, every weeknight, CBS Radio broadcasts a complete up-to-the-minute summary of the Army McCarthy hearings. Throughout the hearings, tune in CBS Radio for complete evening coverage of each day's significant events. Listen for Robert Trout reporting on the news on the CBS Radio Network.